but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him that have called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, as ye born bathed and sighted since your milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. And for he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary devil, though as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance. Wherefore, seeing we, we also are compassed about with a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Encouraging as yeah. possible. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. For that Amen. Grace and that talent. Amen. To be able to Amen. use the word in that fashion. Amen. The way it's been put together to encourage. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God, you need to be able to the person who will be doing the end of year uh, report. straight on now just to talk about what the ministries have been doing this year starting with the men's ministry it's been a very blessed year for them they've had a number of different events this year beginning at, at in january with a discussion evening which took place they've also had four prayer breakfasts throughout the year i think yeah, there's some pictures showing and we have a clip from the men's ministry service which took place in october just to remind us Thank you. 
Entitled the Genesis to Revelation Project, which is a verse by verse study of the Bible, and it's constantly being updated as more scriptures are added. If you'd like more information about this, please speak to Sister Eslin. And just to end with some anniversaries that have taken place this month, the 19th of December marked the 13th, I believe it's the 13th anniversary of Vessels of Treasure Fellowship. We thank God for 13 blessed years. Thanks for our brother out there. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
um, we're going to take up uh, the tithes and the offerings now. Um, Bless the Lord, God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. Once the time's not free, we'll be taken. We're going to minister one song or two songs? One song? Three songs? Oh, wow. I'm wrong. <laughs>
eyes surrounded I sit like a lion in the calf Then the man lost the eagle flying
God is good. All the time. Thank you. Let's song in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Should we give our all on to God? Well, that's what he desires in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So, amen. We've come to the point where we're going to hear the words. You know, it's that sweet, precious word of Jesus Christ. We give God thanks that we're gathered in the house of God to spring in this new year. You know, there's many people outside. You know, even ourselves. You know, in our, in our former lives, we would be raving and partying and drinking and doing all manner of, of things, you know, to see a, a new year and then we wonder why problems after problems and issues and stresses and all these things arise because the way you enter into something is usually the way that you will perpetuate within that thing. If you enter into something well with the right spirit, the right mind, you know, that mind will keep you, you know, as you go in, but if you go in and a drunk and drunk and mess into the new year, can't really expect, you know, much to come of it, you know, so we're in the right place, you know, just to bring in this new year, we're going to hear the word of God from our beloved pastor, and I just pray that you prepare your hearts, you know, this final half hour, you know, of 2017, let that half hour be spent giving full, you know, attention and full reverence and full air, you know, onto the word of God, true, God said, he that has an air, let him, let him hear, you know, we all have airs today, you know, are more than just our physical heirs, but our spiritual heirs, you know, we have somewhere within our soul that's yearning for a word, you know, that needs to be touched by the hand of God, that only, you know, God can satisfy. There's always, you know, uh, you know, something within us that only God can satisfy, you know, so we see, as we hear the word of God today, we need to send out his word to just break every stoniness and you know, remove every hindrance and every obstacle, all those things that come to try and distract us away from the word. You know, just give yourself, you know, this half hour, you know, to hear only from God and let God speak into your spirit, you know, speak into you and let him, you know, show you what it is that he desires from you, you know, show you what it is that he desires for you to change and just allow the word to, you know, do with that which is set forth to do in Jesus' name. So let us welcome our, welcome our dear pastor. Thank you, Lord, for a lovely song. Amen. You're blessed. You're blessed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I want to thank God for this great privilege and opportunity to share His word in Jesus' name. Yes, indeed, our brother Dennis is becoming brother Isaiah. Amen. He has become brother Isaiah officially Amen. in the name of Jesus. I know we may get um, take a little time to get used to, as we've known him as Dennis for a long time, but I'm sure that that word will pick up. Somebody gave me an idea, I think it was Maureen or so, and said maybe what we should do is just change the name on our phones. <laughs> when we go to look, it's like we're looking for Dennis. Oh, Dennis. oh Isaiah. <laughs> Amen. So that's a, that's a good way. Yeah, just practice it. It, it happens. And, uh, a lovely name. Um, is it God Saves or so? I think it is. Yeah, God is our salvation or so. It's a wonderful name in Jesus' name. We bless the Lord for that. And we thank God for this year. What a mighty year. Oh, man. Amen. Sister, this time we have like this. That's how we've got. Amen. We really thank the Lord for bringing us through in Jesus' name. And I know you all have your own personal testimonies as well of what's happened this year. Only you can know that, but we share it as well in the name of Jesus. And um, we thank God for the ministers in the house of the living God who continue to preach the word and we continue to encourage them all to continue preaching in Jesus' name. The word of God. That's what we need in these days, the word of God. Everything else may pass, but the word of God abides forever. So that's what we need. We need whatever it is that abides forever. So that we're on that train as much as possible, so that we abide forever also as well. We just thank God for the whole household of faith, for blessing and treasure, fellowship, give each other a clap in Jesus' name, by the grace of the living God. And all the departments we have continued to do their work. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name, we do appreciate it. 
Sometimes we all clash a bit, but we love each other in Jesus' name. We all love each other. And let that brotherly love continue in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Truly, this is a privilege and an opportunity, Lord, to even hear your word. And we're grateful, Lord, that when so many people are drinking themselves and drowning their sorrows, as they say, doing all sorts of things and giving praise to their own selves and praise to each other, we praise you today. We are grateful, Lord God, for bringing us even to this point, Lord, and we know that very soon we shall cross over to the next year. But Lord, we thank you even for now. Who even knows? You may come before you, yeah. before we begin a new year, so we continue to be sober even unto the end. Thank you, Lord, and we pray that you bless this word today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. Turn with me, if you may, to Ephesians. Chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, say amen when you're there, Ephesians chapter 2, I've entitled this sermon, Without God, sounds very doom and gloom doesn't it, without God, without God, someone help me say without God, without God. oh my. If you look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3, it talks about our past. Verse 4 to verse 6, this is Ephesians 2, talks about our present. And verse 7 to verse 10 talks about our future. Praise God. And what I want to focus on today is just verse 11 um, to verse 13. In Jesus' name. Are you there? Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time, oh my, at that time, thank God it doesn't end there, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the common Strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, praise God, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometime, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And let's read verse 14. For he is our peace. Who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. <coughs> Praise God. We were Christless, we were hopeless, and we were godless. We were without Christ, we were without hope, we were without God. What a daunting prospect. We didn't have Christ. You know, Christ is glorious. Amen. Without Christ, no one can make it to heaven. Amen. Without Christ, our, our fate is sealed. We're doomed to hell. And once we were without Christ, you know, now we're in Christ, we need to look back and we need to be grateful. Now, there was a time that we were without Christ, and many people have died without Christ. They went six foot under the ground without Christ. <coughs> Some people are without food. That's one thing. Some people are without a home. That's another thing. Some people are without um, comfort of a family. That's one thing. But you can't be without Christ. That's the worst one ever. To live your life without the one who is the only access to God, the only access to heaven, is a terror. Christ said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now, don't take that too personally, like it's physical flesh and, and physical blood. He's saying, partake of me. We were without Christ once. Oh, Lord. We had no hope because if we're without Christ, we have no hope. 
And if we have no hope, there's, there's, there's no God. As far as we're concerned, we were purposeless. We were excluded from all the promises of God. You like reading the Bible. You've not read all the Bible. You've seen all the promises and you say, praise God. But once we didn't have those. Once none of the scripture, none of the things that were in the Bible pertain to us. We were excluded from all the covenant promises. We were miserable people. We were walking straight down to hell. How can you remember? Cast your mind back. Sometimes we don't see that, but you cast your mind back. Let's go back. Remember when you were partying. Remember when you were clubbing yourself away. Remember when you didn't care and your attitude was bad and you didn't want to change. We were walking straight to hell. But thank God that one day, Jesus. a glorious God came into my life as Jesus Christ. And now I'm with Christ. My life is with Christ in God. Hallelujah. And he will never leave me nor forsake me. Yeah. Oh, I've got assurance now yeah. that I can sheepishly say boldly say today the Lord is my helper. Yeah. I don't know what it is that you're going through but you can boldly say it. Yeah. You could have boldly say it once but today you can boldly yeah. say the Lord Is a world that there is God. 
But the world that we live in is not so beautiful because there's so much atrocious things happening. So there's no God. So my question is, how, what, what parameters did you use to measure that there is a world that is good? How did you come to that conclusion that there's a world that is good? Where did it come from? Have you seen that world? Is that world impressed in your conscience? Do you know really that it exists? Is that what you're saying? You know that world exists. It actually exists. But when you say bad, well you can't say bad. Bad means nothing unless you say good. Yeah? So you know what people have done? What people have done today is they've exalted their own opinions. Their own opinions are now God. It's what guides them and governs them in their daily living. That's what's happening out there today. Everybody is living by their own opinions. Well, yes, there is a world without crime. There is a world where there is just joy. There is a world where we're all going to get along and love each other. It's a world that we are going to when we finish in this world. But we're practicing now because we have God with us now. We have Christ with us now. And we have hope in us now. And that's why we're practicing. But they are right, the atheists, to this degree. That truly a world that is crime-ridden doesn't have God. You're right. But there are people in that world who do have God. And those people are in this house today and they are grateful that God is a being that has pressed upon their soul and they know their future. They're without hope we were once, without Christ. And we were without God. Christ is the one who has made a new and living way. In the Old Testament, the priest, you've got to get the weight of this, the priest had to go in through the courtyard, sacrifices were done in the courtyard, then enters into the holy place and to the most holy place without a single person with him. And every time he went in, he trembled because he's entering into the most holy place now. And he trembles because this is where everything can go wrong. <laughs> I may not come out of this place alive. I might die. No, no, you, you, you're not feeling enough because it was Aaron or someone else. Think of, put yourself in the place of high priest now. Come on, put yourself in the place of high priest. Entering in every day. I mean, once a year. They used to have it freely before, by the way. Yeah. But one now, once a year, because it's been restricted because of Nadab and Abihu, who don't respect, who have no godly fear for God. But once a year, they're entering in. All the things of God, you would notice that God wanted us to be free before. It wasn't the sacrifices of bulls and so on that God wanted. God just wanted the people to hear his voice. But, you know, the people didn't want it that way, so we had to go to sacrifices and so on. God wanted us to be free with him, but we couldn't handle it. We couldn't handle it, so we had to go through the system. So here's a system now. Every year, you're entering in. You are, not Aaron. You are the high priest today. Yeah, you are the high priest. Put yourself in the place. You're entering in. You don't know if you're going to come back alive. You have a group of people waiting outside there. They're hoping you come out alive. Because if you don't come out alive, there's trouble for the land. There is great trouble for the land. So you're walking. You're walking in and... If you make it out, everyone rejoices. Can you imagine having that kind of pressure and stress upon you regularly? Yeah. But there's a new living way. Amen. We don't go in on our own anymore. God who is in the holy place, most holy place himself, Hallelujah. has come out to us. Yeah. In Jesus Christ. And now we go in boldly with Christ every time. We're not afraid anymore because we're with Christ. Without Christ it's dangerous. But with Christ we're bold. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me. Now I'm with Christ. Everything is changed. I'm bold. I wasn't bold. 
before. I was a messed up person. My brains were messed up. I didn't know whether I was coming or going. I put all my energy to partying, looking for girls or boys if you're a girl. <laughs> but this is the perspective here. And I was so changed, man looking for man, woman looking for woman. Messed up state and society. We were without Christ. We were without hope. We were without God. What a miserable state. Oh, when I get on my knees, I just thank God every day that I'm in Him now. I thank God that I understand that He is my God. I'm so grateful to God that I'm still not stuck in that situation that I used to be going straight to hell. I'm now bold in the Lord. I know that my God will keep me even through all the stresses and the mess and the confusion of this society. Christ has defeated it. And if I'm with Him, I've defeated it as well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We're now with Christ. Changes everything. It's big. It's huge. Yeah, I, I couldn't even explain it. It's that big. Now you're with Christ. You're ashamed. I was all ashamed. You're with Christ. Walk boldly. I'm not terrorizing you on that street. Go through the street if you have to. Oh, God is with you. Let God be true in every man a liar. What are they telling you outside? It doesn't matter. You're with Christ. You're with the champion. You're with the savior. You're with him. Walk through. The trial is heated up. You're with Christ. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They realized that they were with. They knew that they were with Christ. That's why they're so bold. Where's your boldness gone? Oh, this life is too much. Oh, no, 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 excuse me. Then you're living it without Christ. You're doing it without Christ. It's too much for my head. Where's Christ? Of course it's too much for your head. We know that. But where's the one who's conquered it and defeated it? Huh? Anywhere you go, Jesus I know. And your name has got to be attached to the behind that. Jesus I know. Sanchez I know. Jesus I know. Deacon Gabby I know. Jesus I know. Pastor Olu I know. Jesus I know. Brother Gervais I know. Jesus is ahead of you. You're with Christ said now. You don't need to be ashamed. Some people are still ashamed. Why are you ashamed? Why are you repenting of this glorious thing? You don't need to repent of this. It's settled. It is finished. The job is done. We're just going through now. It's already done. The, 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 the depths of hell have been conquered. Satan is tumbling forever now. He, he fell from heaven. Second to the head. And lower heavens, then he fell from there to the earth. He fell from earth, he's going to hell. He's going from hell to the lowest hell. Satan's, Satan's fate is sealed. Yeah, amen, amen. It is sealed. You are no conqueror, more than a conqueror. Yeah. Through Christ who loved you. What is it that you're still saying? It is finished. Yeah. It's finished. Pastor, how do I practically apply this in my life? <laughs> ah, ah. You mean you're not living it? What do you mean? You, you, you have to calculate this. It's uncalculatable. Incalculatable. You have him walking confidence. Walking boldness. If God be for you. If God be for you. If God be for you. You don't need to worry anymore. If God is for you. mess your mind up. I'm just going to try to apply it. Don't apply walking boldness. Let, let Christ apply it in you. Amen. Just yield to him. Glory. The time when you're feeling stubborn, yield to him. Say, Lord, forgive me. Glory. And yield back to him. And he's going to lead you. The Bible says, do not lean upon your own understanding. You have it, but don't lean on it. Put it under subjection to Christ. And let Christ lead you. Oh, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will. Direct your path. Look, this is what acknowledgement is. 
This is what I was saying to my wife um, yesterday, and I talked about it today. My wife, somebody tells her, so, 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 so. She said, I'm going to ask my husband. She's acknowledging me. That's just what's happened there. She's acknowledged me. Acknowledge the Lord. Anything, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to speak to God. Amen. You know what they said to me? It seems like I've had this a few times. In 2011, somebody said to me, you won't live. It's 2010 actually. You died in 2011. I said, you won't live. You're going to die before 2011. I said, yeah. Yeah, that was news to me. So no one told me about that. But I've heard it now. I'm not going to live. Oh, did you see me running around like a headless chicken? I said, um, only God has the power to take life, not you. So, 2011 came and I was still living. So I said, um, hmm, interesting. I seem to get these things near the end of the year. Because in 2012 or so, 2013, I can't remember exactly when, but I was told once again, you're going to die. I said, really? I said, okay. You see how the enemy wants to put fear? Yeah, I was told I was going to die. So the next year I came again and I lived. I've heard it again recently. <laughs> it keeps visiting me. <laughs> it keeps visiting me. Somebody said, I'm not going to live to the end of this year. Yeah, 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 come on. This, this is church or not? <laughs> I admonish you. <laughs> this is church. Wake up. Wake up. This is church. I, I had. I had a few Jezebels gathered round who said, what are we going to do with Pastor Oli? And I was want to kill him. Come on, please. This is church. Where have you been living all this time? This is church. This is the real deal where you get threatened. But God is with you. Christ is with you. This is the real deal. You just want to go to a church where there's no one threatened you. Nobody says anything to you. You're just coming clean and stuff. That's not church. Christ's life was threatened regularly. The apostles, the children of God, they were threatened regularly, but they came through all in the name of Jesus. We shall come through all in the name of Jesus. This is church. Oh, one person stopped me in my back with a pin. It was poison. It made my legs go jelly. But God made me live again. <laughs> Thank you. 